This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. We're just going everywhere in this case. Uh, I can't, I do not know. Cotton oh, I candy. think, young lady, good sir, might I interest you in some cotton candy? Hmm? Yeah. Sure enough. There is also ice cream, if that is what you'd prefer. Y you! Sh Shelly to killer! It's good to see you as well, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even care. What, what are you doing in a place like this? As you can see, I am selling cotton candy. <laughs> Would you care for some heavenly cotton candy? Even sweeter than death, one bite will send you straight to heaven. That's definitely not something I want to buy from Tequila. <laughs> the meaning of my message, have you understood it? I congratulate you on resolving the case. However, can you truly say in good conscience that it has been solved? Have you been spying on us this whole time? Spying? Heavens no. I was simply watching over you. Like <laughs> God? While disguised as a cotton candy salesman. Isn't that the exact same thing? What is this man's objective? Were you the one who murdered the president? No, the contract with my client has already expired. President Juan is a bit of a celebrity in the world of assassins, you see. Over the years, many attempts on his life were made, and yet, his stubbornly, he chose to live on. He is a robust man, surrounded by flawless security. He even employs body doubles. Robust. That president? Rotund seems more apt. Yeah. However, it seems this time the president's security wasn't exactly flawless. Mr. Rook had only just prevented your previous assassination, but this time... I did not kill him. It is not my principle to kill needlessly. I am also grateful to Rook, a worthy adversary who is connected to me by fate. I love that. Like, the guy who broke my arm is so great. I love him. <laughs> He's a worthy opponent. <laughs> Thanks to that man, I did not kill a target who had no value to be killed. Thanks to Rook preventing the assassination? What does he mean? My client deliberately gave me a false target. It was a betrayal most foul. I am now searching for my client. In all likelihood, it is the same person you are looking for. Is he saying that his client murdered the president? Just who is this person you are referring to? I myself am not allowed to say. It would be a violation of the rules. I cannot disclose the identity of my clients. For to do so would create a problem of trust with my other clients. This is precisely why I am personally searching for them myself. What are you going to do when you find your client? Of course. They shall be rewarded with a punishment most befitting of a traitor. What? That person? What'll happen to them? I will leave that up to your imagination. <laughs> it certainly won't be anything pleasant. I will make them I will make them buy me culvers. <laughs> <laughs> now we're even. And then run them out of town. Oh yes, I will tell you what just one more thing. Three days ago, Sir Han Dogan escaped from prison. That's kind of important that what? we maybe should have known. Nobody put that in the papers? Like no nobody, one, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody reported like uh Emperor no, Palpatine escaped from prison. Emperor Palpatine escaped prison with his lab dog who can kill people. <laughs> just, watch just, out. <laughs> watch out. Everyone put signs in their yard that say beware of dog. The <laughs> dog will stay out of your yard. <laughs> and that's not beware of dog, it's beware dog. Oh. Beware dog. <laughs> Beware, dog. You're not gonna come to our yard. He looks too skinny there. Three nights past, Dogen's solitary cell was found vacant. Maybe he's just hiding under all that gold. <laughs> it was almost as if he knew I would pay come pay him a visit. He visited Dogen's cell? Could it be that the person De Killer is searching for is... Well then, if you'll excuse me, I must be going. Duh. One assassin hired another assassin because he's in jail and couldn't assassinate him himself. That could be interesting. <laughs> I need you to assassinate this person who's in jail. Duh. No, no, no. The guy in jail wants to assassinate the president. and like, he, oh. But he can't do it himself. Oh. So the killer is like, oh, well, I can do it for you. Wait, you betrayed me? I'll kill you. Gotta break out of jail now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was like... 
someone wanted to someone wanted the killer to kill him in jail he's like he's in jail he's no because no, already... remember the his client whoever he is so wanted the killer to kill the president yeah, yeah. And then the killer found out, like, oh, nope, client betrayed me. I'm not killing the president. I'm going to find the client. And then he visited Dogen's cell. So Edgeworth's assumption is that Dogen was the client. Oh, okay. Let us both do our best to track down that person. Nee, 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 nee. So, the killer and Dogen, these two assassins. That cab driver's still there. Hmm? This sound is... Mr. Edgeworth, Judge Courtney's cell phone's ringing! Oh yeah, why did we just take her cell phone? This is what the Mozilla is... theme song. Oh, I was like, what is this theme song? It's a good one. Got? Could it be John? Mr. Edgeworth, how are you doing? It sounds like they're using a voice changer. Who is this? Someone you've been searching for. The one in the Red Hood. The Red Hood? Are you the person who ambushed Kay? Brilliant deduction. I'd expect no less from a prodigy prosecutor such as yourself. It's just the guy in the taxi. With the voice. <laughs> it's Gus. <laughs> With Gus the voice is the killer. It's, it's actually, we literally are seeing him do it. Like, it's like a walkie-talkie look. <laughs> uh, pay no attention to the man in the taxi. Exactly. Mr. Edgeworth, I want to listen in on this, too. Can you put it on speakerphone? Very well. I'll put it on speaker. Oh, put it on FaceTime. Well, I must say, I didn't expect the girl to get amnesia. Yeah, you suck. What's that supposed to mean? But that's not all, you see. Hmm, perhaps I should let you in on this, Mr. Edgeworth. Actually, I was the one who ordered Blaze the best to kill Jill Crane. What? This must be the person to killer spoke of. I really should thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You have no reason to thank me. Oh, you haven't noticed? My, that's troublesome, you know. I wanted to you to catch Blaze for me. So I took dear little Kay. What? If Kay was suspected, I knew you would investigate the case. And I was sure that the great Miles Edgeworth would be able to catch Blaze. It was all according to my plan. Jill Crane's not dead, and in reality, Jill Crane faked her own death, and this is Jill Crane. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I get the feeling that you had the wrong idea, so let me clear something up. Blaze the Best wasn't the one who kidnapped Miss Courtney's son. You. Why do you know about the kidnapping? You and Miss Courtney are really quite alike, you know. She even came to visit you in the detention center and got all friendly with you. How could this person know something like that? Judge Courtney was supposed to have visited me using the detective's name. I bet you're wondering how I knew about the kidnapping, right? It's quite simple, really. It's because darling little John is in my care right now. What? Huh? You seem surprised. I'm not surprised. If only I could see the look on your faces. Quickly, little K. You have to hurry and steal him back. You wouldn't want to tarnish the Yonagarasu's name on your first job, would you? Shut up! You didn't even know it's my first job? Why does this person know everything in so much detail? Well, I suppose we can I can't blame you for your mistake. It seems Blaze was after John as well, you see. You know what I'm kind of concerned about? What? We haven't seen... I cannot think of his name right now. Wolfman! Oh, Lane. We haven't seen Lang Z in forever. It's true. Is this going to be like Scooby Doo? Ruro! Ruro! Where, like, Scooby Doo, it's like, uh oh, the lady. Scooby Doo, who... but the culprit is the dog. Where it's like, uh oh, the, the Old lady. Old Man Smivers. The, the lady who looks like the alligator monster that they ran into is missing. I wonder if she's the alligator monster. We haven't seen her since the beginning of the episode. So there were two kidnappings. He's such a fool, you know. Kidnapping his own son instead. Is John there with you? If he is, then I would like to hear his voice. Hmm, he's here, but I'm afraid I can't do that. You see, he's asleep right now. In that case, there's no way for us to know if you really kidnapped John or not. <laughs> I suppose you don't have to believe me if you don't want to. What is your objective? Is it to get Patricia Rowland declared not guilty? A not guilty verdict, eh? I couldn't care less about that. Nice. So his objective is different from Blaze's. 
I think I'll keep my objective a secret for now. Come on! Well then, I must be going. I hope you enjoy yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't think you can get away with this. Then come and get me. I'll be looking forward to it. That is, if you can bring me to justice, but I highly doubt that. I just realized I was giving him the voice from Trivia Murder Party. Wake up! <laughs> oh, this is a terrible game, but what people like it anyways for I some I like reason. Trivia Murder Mystery Party. It kind of sucks. Unless you're playing and it's uh, Take the Money. Nah. Who in the world was that? I don't know. We don't have enough information. Yeah, this is definitely the really long investigation period. Darn it! We're totally clueless! <sighs> Meanwhile, they seem to know everything about us. Know everything about us. Kay, you're right. Thinking about it, it is strange. How does the culprit know so much about us? It's so weird. I mean, they even knew about the kidnapping. We must figure out how the culprit was able to obtain that information. I must recall. What exactly did that person know? You and Miss Courtney are really quite alike, you know. She even came to visit you in the detention center and got all friendly with you. Yep. You wouldn't want to tarnish the Yadagorasu's name on your first job, would you? You even know it's my first job? You seem surprised. If only I could see the look on your faces. That's it. By analyzing our conversation with the culprit. I figured it out, Kay. I know the source of this person's information. What? Really? In all likelihood, this person probably has been tailing us, has been taking photos of us, has planted a bug on us. I mean, taking photos would be stupid. It's Vladeheart, y'all! That would be dumb. If Vladeheart was like the main mastermind tailing behind us, us, that I would be like, kind of funny, though. That would be funny. I feel like Edgeworth would notice if someone was tailing us. However, a bug placed on us might make sense. Someone put a ladybug on us. I believe it is highly likely that we have been bugged. Bugged? If you recall what that person said... You seem surprised. If only I could see the look on your faces. If they couldn't see our faces, that means they weren't taking our pictures or following us. Then they must have planted a bug somewhere. Could have been in my stuff. Was there anything they could have had a chance to bug? There must be a hint somewhere in our conversation just now. That's right. That person knew something they shouldn't have. The conversation between Judge Courtney and myself in the visitor's room. Judge Courtney! Hush! Please, have a seat. The only evidence I had with me at that time was... Where was the bug planted? Is it in the Anagrazi's badge? Oh my gosh. Kay, may I see your badge? My Anagrazi's badge? No way! But why not? Mr. Edgeworth, just because you became a great thief, assistant, doesn't mean you're gonna re be ready to wear this badge yet. That's not it. It's very likely that a bug was planted in it. What? In my badge? Let's take a closer look. I've been wondering about this for some time now. Did you inherit that badge from your predecessor too? Nope. There wasn't one, so I made one. I thought so. It is rather conspicuous. I think you're just about the only thief who'd ever want to wear something like that. Hey, stop making fun of me! If we turn it around and we find the thing... Oh, <gasps> this is... It seems I was right. Yadagrasu's badge data updated in the organizer. How did you know? The person had been in contact with you. You mean, when I was knocked unconscious? Yes, that's why I thought one of your possessions might have been bugged. However, that person also overheard my conversation with Judge Courtney. Even though that conversation took place in the visitor's room with just the two of us. <gasps> so you were holding on to it at the time? Exactly. All the other evidence had been taken away from me. I'm Only sorry, Mr. Edgeworth, you can't carry that hot dog. That was the evidence from <laughs> two cases ago. <laughs> Only the Autograss's badge remained with me. So this creep's been listening in on us the whole time? Indeed. That must be how they knew about all the information we collected. Does 
that mean they're also listening in on this conversation? Most likely. Just stomp on the bug. Hey, Buster! K K K. Eavesdropping's for cowards! Why don't you come out here and fight us fair and square? Hmm? What was that sound just now? Ow! Huh? That's... Nicole! Honestly, y'all scared the bejesus out of me! Your voice was so loud there, little missy. No, Kay's been pretty withdrawn in this video episode. Kay, Nicole, Nicole has been having her noise-canceling headphones on, turning them <laughs> off, right when she screamed, she's like, ah! Are you wearing noise-canceling headphones? What? Are you wearing noise-canceling headphones? What? <laughs> I was so surprised I done fell flat on my behind. I'm sorry. What were you getting so riled up for? You gotta hear this. It really grinds my gears. Yeah, yeah? Okay, please just leave it at that. Unless you want to make tomorrow morning's headlines. <gasps> that was close. Aw, oh, shucks. Don't be such a stick in the mud. What's wrong with letting a gal open her heart and spill the beans? For now, I'll turn the bug off. Bug data jotted down you in the organizer. You can turn it off? Yep. So, did you find the kidnappers? Miss Swift was the boy you saw being kidnapped. This boy in the photo. <laughs> the kid who stole the bike. Did he look like this? this? Binky <laughs> hmm? Nope, that ain't nothing like. He had a more stupid looking face and was yeah, wearing a colored school uniform. This poor kid. <laughs> I thought so. Yet again, we were led astray by this woman's testimony. We will have to conduct our investigation all over again. Good job. So, we're back to where we started. Are there any new leads? It's... There's only 20 minutes left until 2 o'clock. Will we be able to make it in time? Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Edgeworth! About that phone call just now? <laughs> I was about to burp. Wasn't there a strange sound at the end? A strange sound? Don't think you can get away with this. Then come and get me. I'll be looking forward to it. That is, if you can bring me to justice, but I highly doubt that. Boom. Now that you mention it, it sounded like an explosion. <laughs> John, John Marsh was uh, doing some explosions in the background. <laughs> it might be a hint to establish the culprit's whereabouts. Mmm, I see, I see, I see. The sound of an explosion, eh? Hmph. I would appreciate it if you stopped eavesdropping on us when we're talking loudly. <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor, you're as stingy as ever. First, let's see what she has to say. Begin investigation outside the Grand Tower of Tower Plaza again! <laughs> all my hard work's helped move this case forward. I reckon it's all good day's work. I'm not so sure about that. We've been chasing after an entirely different person. That's true. Indeed, it seems she did not properly examine the photo earlier. What now? Was my info was my info really all that bad? No. Some of the blame also falls on us for relying on a dubious information source. <laughs> wow. And time for us to regroup and start over. C could you hold on a sec? If you think I'm staying quiet after being called a dubious source, you got another thing coming. Fine then. Guess I'll just have to tell you about the scoop I've been saving. You've been saving a scoop? The scoop. Although I'm not expecting much, let's hear it. What is this scoop of yours? It's Moozilla. I have decisive evidence that the Mo mighty Moozilla exists. Okay, let's go, Kay. Hold up! I've been serious! Y'all might not believe it, but it's true! We don't have much time, but... I guess there's no other way. Would this decisive evidence of yours be something you recorded on that tape recorder? That's Mr. Edgeworth for you. You're good at figuring things out, aren't you? It's the sound of Mozilla spewing out fire. This place nearly became a sea of flames. If you say so. D don't make that face! If you think I'm lying, then I you have to listen for yourself. Ready? Here comes the flame. <laughs> How is that? Um, it's hard to tell over your shouting. But if you say so, I guess those could be flames. 
Miss Swift, did you truly witness these so-called flames? Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't really see it with my own two eyes. On account of, um, I wasn't actually there at the time. If Muzilla had appeared, wouldn't you have noticed no matter where you were? Well, I was a ways off and I was using a slightly unusual recording method, so... Hmm. Could you explain to me this recording method in more detail? Ugh, guess I'll just dug my own grave. Truth is, I was aiming for a scoop. So I did me some wireless wiretapping. Wait a minute. Wireless wiretapping? If there's no wires, how did you tap them? Kay, please don't concern yourself with the semantics. She was simply intercepting wireless communications and listening in without permission. I've been spending the last few days scooping out the Grand Tower with my mentor. She's basically like a less ethical lot of heart. <laughs> Except not quite as intense. Like, she's very chill with her headphones. They keep... You don't know, but she's blasting her Zen music right now. <laughs> no, 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 like, from Monster University. <laughs> not, I just listened to my tunes. <laughs> not, not her. No, her Zen music, like her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just it's Mystic Ruins. No, I was about to say it's Mystic Ruins on a ten-hour loop. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you are investigating the black market auctions. In that case, you naturally would have tapped the immediate area surrounding the Grand Tower. You betcha, but right then and there, I hear an ear-shattering roar. Finally, Mozilla appears. My heart's pounding. I feel him drawn near. So everything's except the sound is just her own personal impressions, right? In the end, it seems that you didn't actually see anything. Well, I reckon writing's more my thing. Anyways, as I continued turning things into the situation, uh, turning into the situation, little Miss K over there almost shattered my eardrums. Eavesdropping's for cowards! Why don't you come out here and fight us fair and square? That was so loud! Hmm? What was that sound just now? I thought she fell on her butt. That's what I thought was happening. Hmm. I see. Miss Swift, while you were eavesdropping, you were surprised by Kay's voice and fell over. In other words, you did not hear her voice directly. You heard it via the radio waves emitted by the bug, did you not? What? Then does that mean the one who planted the butt gummy was... I was just eavesdropping? I never stooped to bugging nobody. Miss Swift, do you mind if we borrow that tape for a while? Uh, just do what you please already. Nicole's tape recorder data jotted down in the organizer. Man, she's very chill compared to a lot. A lot would be like, ain't no way in me, 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 me. Mr. Edgeworth! Oh, it's Wimp Guy. Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> Mr. Keys, Miss Barry. Miss Barry? Oh boy. And money. D did you find him? Not yet. Just where could John be? John? <gasps> no, no, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. They don't know anything about the kidnapping. Regarding Sebastian, we found him not too long ago. Really? That's great. Thank you so much. Now I will be arrested again. Uh... I mean, that's true. That's it. Talk no, to no, Regina no. first. Or not. Oh, whoops. As expected of Mr. Edgeworth, how did you find him? Naturally. It was all thanks to his powers of logic and reasoning. Actually, it was just a coincidence. I guess we weren't any help at all, were we? What'd you do? <laughs> well, I, I noticed it was the mint Oreo was the blizzard of the month, so... <laughs> did you get some for us? That's the only thing that would make this better. I got one for money. <laughs> The monkey eats Oreo mint well, Oreo Blizzard? Well, who wouldn't eat mint Oreo Blizzard? It's the Blizzard of the Month. It's true. <laughs> Don't be silly. Of course you helped. Really, thanks a lot for the Blizzard. Where were you guys searching anyway, Simon? It was a bit far off, but we searched around the Sunshine Coliseum. Isn't that like the name of the Mario baseball course? Um, that's Mario Stadium. I thought it was Sunshine Col the Sunshine Stadium. Maybe. Sunshine Stadium is definitely in some Mario game. No, that's yeah. the place where the Gavineers concert was and Valent Grammar oh, was gonna oh. have his magic show. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, no, that's not with um that's not with the guitar that's set on fire. No, that was the Gavineers concert. Oh, that was? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The Sunshine Coliseum, so they were by the shore. 
Is that like a few blocks away or like a taxi cab ride away? Probably a taxi cab ride away. There were a lot of people at the event there, so I thought he might have gone as well. An event? Sounds like fun! Is it a festival? I want to go too! It was a lot of fun! There were food stands, fireworks, and much more! Simon got worn out by all the people in the crowd pretty quickly, though. I feel you, Simon. I don't like crowds. I like crowds, <laughs> which is hilarious. You didn't have to tell them that! It's settled. Once we wrap up this case, let's all go there. That's logic? Okay. It sure is. So tell that me is about logic. the circus. At any rate, I'm glad you were able to find him so quickly. Why is that? The truth is, our circus show is about to start soon. So I don't think we would have been able to help out with the search much longer. Hmm, sorry to burden you with this when you also needed to prepare for your performance. No, no, it's okay. Please don't worry about it. After all, I also didn't want to get arrested again. I'm so relieved you were able to find him, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, but the warden still hasn't been declared guilty yet. What? So you're saying there's still a chance I might be arrested? No way, no way, no way, no way! Okay, please don't tease him. I think it's true. Talk to Regina. Alright, now we talk to Barry. Regina. Uncomfortably close. Even though Regina also... Don't pull a Fuko and say Sphine's in the third person. Fuko, bu -da -bu -da -bu. I, I don't know I don't know Japanese good enough. Even though Regina also searched with her friends. Aw, we were beaten to the punch. By friends, does she mean her animals? No one should be able to sparkle like that. If I recall correctly, it wasn't the very big circus supposed to have a performance today. Yep, that's right! We've all been practicing a lot for this upcoming performance. Will Simon also be performing? Of course. He's been practicing really hard even though he keeps saying, No way, no way, no way, no way! He even rode in a balloon and did a lot of advertising for us. So, Mr. Edgeworth, you should also come by and see Simon's heroics. Very well. That is, if we're able to successfully solve this case. You know that's gonna be like the post ad credit scene. Oh, the post credit scene will be him flying through the air. It sounded like you were saying you used animals in your search. Yep, I thought we would be able to find them if I used Regent and Astique, but... Simon said no way, no way, no way, no way, and stopped me. No fun. Hmm, if Simon hadn't been there, there would probably be a mass panic right about now. <laughs> yeah, a lion in the middle of the thing. Simon, why did you stop her? It would have made the city more fun, like the circus. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, please forgive me. Why is he apologizing to me? I haven't said anything. <laughs> it's your stare. It just makes he's, him intimidating. Yeah, but he's... he's a... Examine the car. Oh, uh, guard oh. again? Is the guard duty going well? Yes, sir, of course. Besides using my eyes and my ears, I've also been trying to use my sense of smell and touch and taste. <laughs> the voice is changing. I'm gonna revolutionize the way we do guard duty in this stodgy institution. I'm sorry, but please perform your guard duty the way it's always been done. Uh, hello, hey, Ms. Bro, Gumshoe I'm... and your butt. Hey, Gumshoe's butt. <laughs> and then we warp on the other side. <laughs> what? Gummy, where are you running away? Why, not where? Detective Gumshoe? When Mr. Edgeworth gave up his prosecutor's badge. Why are you talking in the uh, weird person? What? I said, why are you talking in the weird person? The weird person? <laughs> I just didn't know what to do. Detective Gumshoe, don't follow me. And then I began to think, if Mr. Edgeworth isn't a prosecutor anymore, does that mean I'm no longer a detective? But that's not true. Even if I'm Mr. Edgeworth, I'm still a detective, and investigating is my job. Detectives don't investigate just for the sake of prosecutors, pal. That's why, even if I'm on my own, I won't stop investigating. So, you've been investigating by yourself? Then perhaps, at that time... You should thank your former subordinate. He gave me some valuable information which may save Kay Faraday. Detective Gumshoe did? So, Jill Crane's autopsy report. I went to the detention center to see how Kay was doing. That's when I heard. When you get to where I am, you can just create your own truths. Anytime you want. 
K. Faraday's the culprit. That was a truth I simply manufactured out of thin air. Ugh. Good, very good. That face, that expression. You heard that conversation? That's right. And that's why I looked over the evidence again myself, sir. Gummy, that's amazing! So it was you that saved me! Kay, I'm really glad you got your memories back. Thank you. Do you get it now? I can investigate on my own. Gummy, don't run away! You've already proven that you can investigate on your own. After all, you saved me. Detective, I need your help. Currently, I'm not a prosecutor, nor am I much of anything else. Even so, I will pursue this case. I ask you not as a prosecutor, but as a friend. Detective Gumshoe, will you help us? Oh, everybody's listening. Uh, did he just grow a beard? I Drift just bowed to him. Oh, that was his cravat. Yeah. He bowed and it just looked like he <laughs> Did you think he did the Tim Allen thing where he grows, grows the beard in two seconds? Yeah. Or, or like the kid from House Moving Castle where he's like... Whoosh. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, please cut it out, sir. Gummy! Okay, I get it. I get it, pal. I can't bear to see Mr. Edgeworth bowing his head to me like this. Gummy! Thank you, detective. What did you want me to do, sir? Investigate. Detective Gumshoe, please tell me what you found in your investigation so far. Roger! Leave it to me, sir! I have three things to report. First up is about Kay's clothes that were sent to the crime lab. Traces of an extremely powerful sleeping drug called Sleepy ZZZ were found on them. So that means after Kay was drugged at Gorn Lake, she was brought to the roof of the Grand Tower. That's right, sir! Now for item number two. The footage from the security camera at the Grand Tower's elevator. The footage that captured President Juan and Judge Courtney going up to the roof. The elevator is generally the only way to get to the rooftop. And if the elevator was used, the person who used it would be caught on the camera. Exactly! In other words, if you look over the footage from a couple of days ago, you should be able to see an unconscious K being curry carried up to the butt roof. Then, Gummy, does that mean you- I checked out all the footage from before the incident two days ago on Fast Forward. I see. And the results? Well, actually, nothing came up, sir. K never showed up on the tape at all. That was unexpected. I guess it won't be so easy. How was K brought up to the roof of the tower? I should take a moment to carefully consider the possibilities. Well then, let's hear your third and final report. Yes, sir! Last but not least, the most important thing to report. I'm so happy to be able to investigate with you again, Mr. Edgeworth! I'm gonna give it my all to arrest the culprit. That is all, sir. Hmph. I apologize for putting you through so much, Detective Gumshoe. However, that was your most important report. It had nothing to do with the case at all! <laughs> I would have preferred something that's actually useful. Aww. Uh, that merciless attitude. That's the Mr. Edgeworth I know, sir. The kidnapping baby. A young boy has been kidnapped. I want you to help us search for him. Uh, kidnapping, sir! The victim is a boy by the name of John Marsh. He has horns. <laughs> ah, that kid with the horns! Yes, do you know about him? I saw that boy myself, sir. Was that this morning? That's right! He came out of that trailer over there, and then... He walked towards the garbage pickup area. The garbage pickup area. It's right over there, pal. That's where all the trash from the Grand Tower's offices is collected. I don't know what happened after that. Since I left the place around then, it seems we must investigate the garbage pickup area. Investigate. Yeah, see how long this is? This like is very long, yeah. Gummy said John's headed toward the garbage pickup area. Indeed. There might be some traces of him left behind. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. There's a piece of chalk or an eraser or something. There's nothing of interest here. That is 100% something of interest. This milk carton is... It's the one John was drinking out of. There's no mistake. Something must have happened to John here. Garbage pickup is at 11. It 
surprisingly empty, isn't it? Indeed. It seems the garbage has just recently been collected. I'm surprised wonder... he doesn't call it the rubbish. <laughs> rubbish. I wonder, what if the garbage wasn't really collected? Maybe someone stole it all. Mr. Ridgeworth, I smell a case. There certainly is a faint smell of something. Is this truly the smell of a case, though? You want to show Mr. Rogers people's garbage? garbage? No. The garbage pickup time is 11 a.m., so that's why there's no trash. When I looked here earlier, the place was overflowing with garbage, sir. Box. Looks like today is the day when bulk waste is collected during the bar garbage pickup. There really were a lot of bulky items placed here, sir. The garbage truck's compactor can crush any kind of garbage to the dust! No, it seems in case of bulk waste, it is transported as is, without being crushed. Huh. Why do you know that? How, how about how bulk waste is disposed of, Mr. Edgeworth? Ah, uh, maybe Mr. Shields, in order to accomplish his Mr. Edgeworth's equ uh, acquisition plan, sent him something like a moving process instructional brochure. Or maybe, maybe, Edgeworth's mom was a former garbage lady. There are times when you're so sharp it's scary, although there's few and far between. Combined with Detective Gumshoe's testimony, the chances are high that John was attacked at the garbage pickup area. The garbage. If it was here, there wouldn't be many witnesses. But why would John have come to a place like this? It wouldn't be natural to think that he came here to throw something away. We have no way of knowing since the garbage truck has already collected everything. Is that everything? I think we can logic now. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe the cars? Yep. The only vehicles that came through the plaza this morning were the taxi and a blue truck. And Mr. DeBest was kidnapped in the taxi. Yes. Meanwhile, John was attacked in the garbage pickup area. And the garbage was collected from there at 11 a.m. Ah! I've got it, sir! The blue truck was actually... That's right. The blue truck that came through the plaza was a garbage truck. So what are the odds that the two vehicles that left this area both had kidnapped people in it? <laughs> That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. This is a ridiculous case. Like, cool, but ridiculous. However, be that as it may, the officer who gave us this information made no mention that the blue truck was a garbage truck. Talk about careless. How could someone mistake a garbage truck for a normal truck? That's not it, Kay. Today was the day for the collection of bulk waste. I suspect it was a standard truck without a trash compactor that came by to collect the trash. John was taken away by this garbage truck. And where do garbage trucks go? To the dump, of course. Hold up. The culprit was disguised as a garbage collector, right? Then the truck was probably fake, too. How do we know they really went to the dump? No, the garbage truck should have been real. Ugh, why's that? That will be made clear if you simply take a look at the garbage pickup area. This shows the garbage truck that John was kidnapped in was we at real. I mean, there's a lock. Yeah. The garbage pickup area is locked. Uh, only a real garbage collector could have unlocked it to collect the gar the trash. Precisely. We should assume we would we should assume that a genuine garbage truck was used. For example, if the kidnapper would, could have put John into a large cardboard box, if the box was mixed in with the rest of the bulk waste, the garbage collector would have carried John away without even knowing it. Exactly. The culprit would then lie in wait at the garbage dump. And if they said, I threw it away by mistake, the box would be returned to them. Hmm. Without it being opened. Any garbage dumps nearby? Donway Center. <gasps> There's two of them! Donway Center and Don Dusk Waste Management. So which garbage dump was he taken to? Probably the closer one. Could there be a hint in any of the information I hold? Into the Coliseum, maybe? Well, there's the sound of the explosion. But I don't know where that was. No. Hmm. I guess I'm stupid this time. <laughs> Try it again. Try the one I thought of. I need to think this over one more time. 
Because there's the Coliseum, which is near the other one. That's true. Nope. We both suck. <laughs> I can't see a clear distinction. Ed Edgeworth just slapped himself a few times. I think we just did it wrong order. Yeah, fireworks. The fireworks was the explosion. Oh! That's what we have to do first. Mr. Keys, didn't you say that there were fireworks at the Coliseum earlier? In the daytime. <laughs> You can't, can't see, see fireworks, fireworks in, in the, the day daytime. But we can't hear Mr. Rappers. Over that. <laughs> huh? What about them? Were those fireworks set off during the day? Yeah! Even just while we were there, a bunch of them were set off. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? That explosion sound we heard at the end of the kidnapper's phone call could very well have been the fireworks. Don't think you can get away with this. We already heard this. Then come and get me. I'll be looking forward to it. Bring that me is, my... If you can bring me to justice, but I highly doubt that. Justice equals a Dairy Queen blizzard of the Boom. Month. Boom. For the sound to have been picked up by the phone, it must have been fairly loud. So that means... Those are like illuminations. That's illuminations. Even though I bet the fireworks could be heard in lots of places around the Coliseum. Indeed. It would be impossible for us to search the entire area by ourselves. I miss illuminations. If only we could have the police lend us a hand. There's the pole police. I have to go back to Pole po Valley. Exactly. <laughs> That's what's up. Based on the explosion sound we heard from the kidnapper's phone, we know that John is being confined someplace in the vicinity of the Coliseum. <sighs> One of the garbage dumps is right next to the Coliseum. John was almost certainly taken there. In which case, the place he is being confined to must also be somewhere near uh, close by. Yeah. Detective Gumshoe? Yes, sir! Could I ask you to search the area around this garbage dump? You don't have to ask me like we're strangers, sir. It feels so distant. Please just order me around like you normally do. Are you sure, detective? Right now, I'm not a prosecutor. Didn't I tell you, sir? Detectives don't just investigate for the sake of prosecutors. You have my thanks, detective. He runs off. Investigation oh, complete. Edgeworth's pride's been better. restored. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, look, it's almost time. Yes. It would be best if we hurry. They should also be at their limit. Taxi, take us to... Detective Gumshoe, I'm counting on you. Leave it to me, sir. This may be an unofficial investigation. But I'll call in all of my pals from the station to help. I'll help, too. Stealing John back is my job, after all. I will be returning to the courtroom. I might be able to draw out some more time. Okay, well then, even in the depths of night... Hmm? The clock just struck two. We have to hurry! Yes, sir! Aw, oh, my introduction! When no other bird dares to take flight... It's still not a to be continued. Yep, I, this is exactly what I remember. It's like five hours where there's no to be continued. Well, we're ending the episode bah, there because bah. I know for a fact that that's like a pretty decently length series. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. Oh I told you there was gosh. like a five hour series where there was no to be continued. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Next episode will be great. It's one of the high points of the case, I would say. Nice. It's truly epic. We're Anyhow, not even in the middle. Nope, we're not even in the middle. This case is super long, but it's really good. What the heck is going to happen? Is, like, Kay going to get kidnapped? Oh, and, you, you have no idea. And then, like, Edgeworth is going to get thrown in a box. Just a and box. And put out C. And then, <laughs> and then uh, John Doe will give, uh, uh, I don't know, Poison Courtney. cotton candy. Yeah, <laughs> poison cotton candy to Courtney, and she dies, and then we don't have the evidence we need. Well, you'll have to find out next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day, and God bless. And go to Dairy Queen and get the Blizzard of the Month if it's near you and open.